Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined by Dustin Rogers. Jim Caldwell addressed the media for the first time since Thursday yeah. night's meltdown. Kind uh, of. Yeah, he, uh, he he said words. I'm not sure if he actually addressed what happened. Um, in his opening statement, Justin, he had said, I'm not, talk I'm not here to talk about Green Bay, even though this is the first time we've talked to him since Green Bay. And of course, naturally, the questions were about Green Bay, the Hail Mary, what happened. People just trying to find some, some element of closure to what happened and understand um, how the Lions messed up that play so badly. Um, what was your take on, on, on Caldwell's reluctance to uh, field questions about the, the play? He's consistent, if nothing else. But, um, you know, this this is the standard uh, press conference after a game. Now, there was a long weekend in between, um, just a mm -hmm. situational thing because of a Thursday game. But this is where we would typically ask the questions, the follow-ups after uh, we take our closer look at the, the film, watching it again. Um, and, and we do. We had follow-up questions. Um, you know, follow-up questions that you, the fans, want to know. Um, and, and the fact that he comes out in his, his opening statement and tries to shut down mm -hmm. those questions, I thought, was ridiculous. I get you want to move forward, but it's Monday of a game week. You know, this is the normal time you answer these questions, and, and I don't think that he had um, really any right or reason to, to pull that card. And I'm not sure why he did pull that card. It's not even in, in his best interest. I understand that he doesn't want to talk about something bad that happened or... Um, I know he has a history of in-game strategic mistakes and so forth, so maybe he didn't want to get that ball rolling either or whatever. But these questions aren't going away. And if you go up there and you say, hey, I'm not answering these questions, the questions are still coming. And I've seen right. it time and time again with big stories. A lot of times it's, it's off-the-field stuff. A coach will go up there and say, I'm not, I'm not answering questions about this. By saying that, you're still getting the questions. You just you, you look uh, maybe like you have your head in the sand by, by not answering. And I think that's what, what's happening with Caldwell. He could easily just go up there in my mind, and he could say, we messed up, you know, we, 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 um, we should have had a, a different defense out there, we called, could have called a timeout, we should have had Calvin out there, whatever, and then just move on. And this, I think, would be much less of a story. And instead, we're all sitting, here, sitting around talking about how Jim Caldwell uh, is refusing to answer questions, and uh, uh, he was, I thought, visibly and audibly fl flustered during uh, his press conference today, Justin. That's maybe the most, um, he's a very composed guy, even in the face of adversity. Um, that's one thing I'll say about Caldwell. And, um, he was not that today, I thought. Yeah, it, it was frustrating for him to come out and say, oh, we've analyzed everything, we <clears throat> realize our mistakes, we realize where we got to correct them, but we're not going to tell you any of those things. Yep. And uh, no matter how we worded our questions, <clears throat> whether, um, you know, I thought there was a good question from another reporter asking how they would defend that play in the future if it presented himself, because that's something Caldwell always does. He, he studies other game-ending situations and has his team prepare in equal settings well why wouldn't you do that with your your own play calls mm -hmm. um the way i interpret it i don't know if you you read it the same way is uh, this was a terrell austin call um jim they all filter through jim caldwell he's ultimately responsible but he trusts his coordinators and he didn't want to throw his coordinator under the bus uh for yep. for calling the the hook and ladder defense as opposed to the hail mary defense not having calvin johnson out there having Ezekiel Ansa floating around the side. I think it was a Terrell Austin call, and, and, yeah. and Caldwell just didn't want to get into it because he didn't want to look like he was making an excuse. And I understand that, but when it comes to a, a press conference, here's the way I look at it. You're, I mean, it, from our perspective, it's a press conference. We're asking information-gathering questions and so forth, hoping to get information. But from Jim Caldwell's standpoint, from the club standpoint, a press conference, is, it's public relations, and you're trying to put out enough words or enough tidbits and nuggets out there to appease the public, to appease the reporters. Um, and then get out of there, right? And it's just to kind of, it's, it's, public, it's public relations. And I don't think he fulfilled that obligation today or did it in the best interest of the club because we're still left with a lot of questions. Uh, and I think he's just infuriated more and more fans by refusing to answer fans who want to understand why why Rodgers was so open. And it, I mean, another reporter made a really good point today. If Rodgers didn't catch that ball, who's behind him next in line? It's Devontae Adams. And Great so, shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so... Um, it was a really a, a poor play, and it was wasn't just a. I mean, it was a miraculous play, but it wasn't just that. It was, there were schematic problems, um, personnel problems, and he could have addressed those without throwing people under the bus, um, but he didn't do that. And I thought he failed the press conference. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, if it was me, and again, I'm I'm not a coach in the NFL, obviously, but if it was me, I come out and I, I say, hey, we looked over the film. This is what we saw. This is what we, you know, probably would have done different. We wouldn't have had this player here. Uh, we could have used the timeout. Um, 
you know, we, we, they should have definitely thought about it more. I mean, that's that's kind of the the worst part of the whole situation. They had an opportunity to check the personnel, to call the timeout, and take a uh, a longer look at it. That happened in another game this week. I can't remember if it was pro or college. I watched so much football this weekend, but there was an end of the game situation where a coach did call a timeout and uh, changed out his personnel, and um, you know, all those plays are are low. Uh, potential of success, but you help yourself by by getting to a better position by seeing kind of what they're running out there. Um, Caldwell tried to immediately bury it, and um, it's it's going to backfire to a degree. Might not matter because well, it's probably not going to survive. That's that was my next point. Is that, yeah. that for me the bigger picture here is not just um, you know Caldwell having a bad press conference or something. It's it's that you know in my mind this hail mary play is yet another strategic mistake on his part sure. and it kind of squashes any of the goodwill that he had built from the three game winning streak you know that three game winning streak put the lines on the outskirts of that playoff chase people are starting to talk about well there's some opportunities here with losing teams on the horizon and if the lines were able to finish with eight or nine wins or sneak into the playoffs uh that might save caldwell's job particularly considering the, the fords love him so much personally uh, but something like this with a, another loss with another strategic in-game mistake um, kind of a um, kind of a, a poor press conference afterward, and taking accountability and explaining what's going on with the club. I think it's just another nail in his, in his coffin, to be honest. And I, I say that as someone who really respects him as a man, but I don't see him surviving this. I didn't before. I certainly don't now. It, I think it's just uh, another validation to kind of what we've always said about Caldwell. He's he's an outstanding organizer. Uh, he's a, a great leader of, of individuals throughout a week. I, I even think he, you know, he can construct or help construct a really good game plan. But when the bullets are flying, as they like to say, and, and it's uh, rapid decision-making within the confines of the contest with time management, with uh, quick decision play calls and adjustments, I think that's where Caldwell's that's that's his weakness you know he, he kind of flounders in those situations uh, how many games does he have under his belt now 12 plus last year's 17 so you're talking just over 30 games um you know we didn't go over it but you you were saying you could think of already four or five or you know if there were strategic blunders that that cost mm-hmm. them contests and there are probably more if we really sit down and think about it and that's just way too high of a rate in in a game where uh, the margin of victory is so razor thin yep I, I agree. I co-sign that. <laughs> That's what we got for today. He's Justin Rogers. I'm Kyle Mikey. We are M Live. Keep her here.